Okay, welcome to another Ginger Mathematician video where I'm going to go through all the IGCSE questions I can find for 0580 on trigonometric equations. So trig equations, this usually appears towards the end of a paper too. It tends to be some of the hardest questions on the paper. If you're looking for that A or A star grade, then this is topic to know. So I'm going to go through as many questions as I can in this video. Right, let's get started. So this question actually comes from uh, one of my subscribers, Knut Salman, and he's asked me to go through this question. So number eight, the grid shows the graph of y equals the cosine of x between zero and 360. We're going to use this a bit later on, solve question A, and we need to solve this trigonometric equation. So the first task is always to get the cos or the tan or the sine on its own. So let's write this down. So 3 cos x is equal to 1, and I want to get the cos x on its own. So what's the opposite of timesing by 3? Well, I want to divide by 3 on both sides of the equation. If I do this, this cancels, which is exactly what I wanted. So I get the cosine of x is equal to a third. And we always have to be a little bit careful when we actually work with trig equations, because there's usually more than one answer. Now we can find one of the answers using our calculator. So we're gonna do this in the standard way. What's the opposite of finding the cosine of something? Well, it's doing the inverse cosine, sometimes called co cos minus one, which always hurts every time I hear it. But we do it to both sides, of course. If we do this, this cancels the whole point of using an inverse function, and we get x is equal to the inverse of cosine of a third. So we're going to go to our calculator and work out what this is. So you can see here, I've already worked it out for us. So this is equal to 70.528. So I'm going to write that in. So 70.528. Two, eight. So that's going to be our first answer. And I'll round this now to three significant figures as always. So 70.5. So that's important. And now we need to work out the other answer. Now, how do we do this? Well, we've got a graph here actually to help us. Now, if we take this answer zero, oh, sorry, one third is approximately 0 0.333. So it's going to be roughly here. Again, this does not need to be accurate in any shape or form. And if I go across here, what the calculators worked out is this particular answer here. So our calculators worked out this one, 70.5. But because we've got a wave function, that's what a cosine function is, we've also got another answer. So if I take that line I just drew for 0 0.333, I can just keep going. Notice I can keep going, and I'm going to hit the graph again. So notice I'm going to hit that graph here as well. So what we need to do is actually work out the answer that goes here. And this will be the strategy that we use for all these trigonometric equations that we do. Now, the first thing to notice is there is a line of symmetry. So there is a symmetrical effect around 180 degrees. And what that means is, is that this length here that I'm doing in black here is the same as this length here. So these two things are the same. So if I can work out that black length, then all I need to do is then add it to 270 and I can work out my second solution. So I'm going to go back to my calculator, use that 70.5 and work this out. So notice what I've done here. So I've taken my answer 70.52 and I've taken it away from 90 degrees. That gives me this black length here. So this 19.47 I've worked out corresponds to the black part here. Now, if this is a little bit confusing at first, that's absolutely fine. I'm gonna do lots of examples in this video. So this is 19.47, so therefore this also has to be 19.47 as well. So then all I need to do is add that 19.47 to 270 degrees, and I'll find the second place where it actually intersects. So if I do that and go back to my calculator, you'll see then the answer will be equal to 289.47, and I'm gonna round this, of course, to three significant figures. So we get then 289. So we get our two answers. And then the last question here wants us on the same grid, sketch the graph of y equals sine x for 0 to 360. Now, this is something to learn off by heart. You do need to just know this. Now, for the sine graph, we always start at 0. Notice the cosine graph always starts at 1. And what we do is we have a curve going on here. And our maximum points are at 1. It's going to be at 90. Notice the parallels with the cosine graph. 
then it comes down towards 180 at zero. Then we're going to go down into the negatives. That's it. When we get to minus one, and then we come back up to get to 360. So you need to know this graph off by heart, and that goes for sine, cosine, and tangent as well. Because without knowing the shapes of the graphs, we can't do the same analysis that we've just done on question 8a. Right, let's go on to the next question. So you can see, often linked here is some kind of sketch that you need to do for the graph. And this time, this time we're going to do y equals tan x. So again, you need to know this off by heart. So the tan graph starts also at zero, like the sine graph, and it goes off to infinity as it gets closer to 90 degrees. So we get this kind of shape like so. Well, we're going to get very, very close to 90, but we won't actually touch it. Then it goes down to the bottom, coming from negative infinity. Very confusing, isn't it? And then we're going to go up all the way until we get to 180. And essentially, this graph repeats every 180, which we can use for part B as well. So then it goes off again, up to infinity and beyond, making sure not going beyond 270, and coming back from negative infinity and then finally coming to here. And what I would do to guarantee those two marks here is draw in this line here at 90, a dotted line. And remember, this is what's called an asymptote, which interestingly in German, they call a Nährungslinie, literally a nearing line. And that's exactly what it is. It's a line that this red function gets closer and closer and closer to, but never touches. So I'm gonna highlight that here. Again, you wouldn't need to write this in the exam, but just to tell you what this line it's heading towards is. And we're actually gonna use this to help us answer part B as well. So we need to solve this equation. We're gonna do it in the same way that we did the previous question. So five tan X is equal to one. Our first strategy is to get the tan x on its own. So what's the opposite of timesing by five? Well, yeah, we're going to divide by five on both sides. And we're going to cancel this out. And then we get tan x is equal to one over five, or 0 0.2 if you prefer. Now, the way to find out the first answer is to get x on its own by doing the inverse tan, so that tan minus one. I'm sure you're used to on both sides. And that's going to help us work out the first answer, and then we'll use it to work out the second. So this cancels, we're left with x, and then we're going to do tan inverse of 1 over 5. So I'm going to go to my calculator and work this out. Right, make sure it's in degrees, so your calculator, whichever one you're using, uh, on this calculator, which you don't really use for 0580, but I'm just using this for the trig that we do. And we're going to do 1 divided by 5, close bracket, and we're going to get our very first answer here, which is 11.3099. So I'm going to pop that in, 0.3099. I will show a few more decimal places just to show the examiner that I have worked this out. And therefore, this is equal to 11.3 to 3SF, which is going to be our first answer. So let's pop that in. Now we're going to use the symmetry of the graph to work out the second answer. There is a kind of lazy approach you can also use for tan, but just to show you this process again and again. So if we actually go to 11.3 and read that off, let's go roughly here, it doesn't have to be exactly accurate. Okay, this is going to be our one fifth and this was at 11.3. And we want to find the other solution, so we carry on this line across until we hit it again. And in the same way we did the previous question, this black line here I'm drawing in is the same distance as this black line here. Now this is a bit easier because we know this black line here, where it starts at zero, goes to 11.3, so this is gonna be the 11.3 actually 0, 0,9 that we worked out before. So all we need to do to work out our second solution here is do 180 plus that black line. So 180 plus the 11.3099. Now we don't even need a calculator for this. We can work this out mentally. So that gives us then 191.3099. And again, we round to three significant figures. So I'm going to just keep that at 191 and pop that in like so. 
So there's our answer. It's interesting here, I'm just looking at the mark scheme. It wants us to do it to one decimal place, which is absolutely fine. Again, I've always been in the habit of doing things to 3SF, but they're being assistant on one decimal place. So again, know your exam and follow the mark scheme and make sure you round to the correct amount. Right, uh, let's carry on. So let's do the next question. Find all the solutions. That's always a hint to the question. It's going to be more than one. So 4 sine x is equal to 3. So let's start this in exactly the same way. So we want to get the sine x on its own. So what's the opposite of signing some, well, of dividing, ah. Uh, what's the opposite of multiplying by 4? Dividing by 4 on both sides. Again, this always starts in the normal way. So we get sine x is equal to 3 over 4, like so. And then we're going to find the first answer by using that inverse sine function, the opposite of sine. So we're going to do sine inverse to both sides. This cancels here. We're left with x. Then we're going to do sine inverse 3 over 4. So let's go and work that out. So let's type that in. So we get sine inverse uh, 3 divided by 4. Pop it in, we get 48.59. Uh, let's write that in. So 48.5903. And that's going to be our first answer rounded to one decimal place. So 48.6. So that's going to be our first answer. 48.6 and now let's work out the second answer now we're going to use that diagram we did before so remember when I drew the sine graph I'm going to use essentially that diagram to help me visualize the second solution so when I draw this this doesn't have to be to scale by any means but just to give me an idea of exactly what's going on so remember sine and cosine always go between uh, 1 and minus 1 and then we're going to have those key values of 90, 180, 270, and 360. This is the way I generally teach at IGCSE. And what we'll do is draw in the normal graph for sine. So go up and then down and then down to here and then up to here. And we're going to pop this solution in, the three quarters solution. So let's do this in a different color. And see what's going on let's do it in green so it's going to be roughly about here again doesn't matter exactly where it is so this is 48.6 and this is 0 0.75 and notice our second solution here is over the other side so it's over here like so so this is what we're looking for here to find the other solution and again I want to bring your attention to that this length here, because of the symmetry of the graph, is the same as this length here. So this time is a little bit different. In order to work out this solution, we start at 180 and we need to minus that blue, uh, sorry, that yellow line. And that yellow line here is 48.6. Yeah? So this here is 48.6. There we are. So in order to work out the solution, we need to do 180 minus 48.6 dot 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 dot. So this is where I do this on my calculator to get the most accurate answer. Now a feature on most calculators is you can use the answer from before. So I'm going to put in 180 and Casio this also works as well and then I'm going to do minus the previous answer. Okay, it keeps it as accurate as possible and so we get our answer of 131.4. Again, because we need it to one decimal place, we do need to be accurate. So 131.4 and that will be my second solution. Okay, so you can check your solutions here. Again, as I've highlighted already, you need to round this to one decimal place. All right, so let's carry on. This is a little bit trickier, got some brackets involved. We still do this in the same way. So let's write out our equation. These questions, by the way, all come from 2020 or 2021 papers, so really up to date. First thing we do here is just get cos x on its own. The easiest way of doing this is actually to do the opposite of timesing by 3 first, which is dividing by 3 on both sides. This cancels, leaving us just with the bracket. So 2 plus cos x is equal to 5 over 3. 
and then we want the cos x on its own. So what's the opposite of plus 2? Well, we want to minus 2 on both. It's not dividing, minus 2 on both sides. This cancels, we get cos x is equal to 5 thirds minus 2, which we could actually simplify here to minus a third. Again, you can use your calculator at this point. And the way we get our first answer, remember, is we use that inverse co uh, cosine. It's the opposite of cos, which is cos inverse. And we do that to both sides. It's quite therapeutic, we're doing this method, and it really gets it well embedded for you as well for your exams as well. So let's go to the calculator and work out the first answer. So this time we're using cos, so we go cos inverse, and we can do it as a fraction. So minus one over three, and that gives us 109.47, dot, dot, and that's gonna be our first answer again, rounded to one decimal place, so that's 109.5. And now we can use the cosine graph to work out the next solution. So remember the cosine graph we drew right at the start, so the one given to us right at the start. I'm gonna draw a quick sketch of this again, just so you can see what's going on. So quick sketch, again, it doesn't have to be too scared or anything like this but it just helps us visualize where the second solution is. Again, we mark on those critical points of 90, 180, 270, and 360. And so the cosine graph, which you need to know off by heart here, starts at one, goes down to 90, round to 180, up to 270, and then finally to 360. Now we've worked out this solution here, which is a slightly different situation to what we've seen before. Let's do this in this color. So this is minus a third, so it's gonna be down here somewhere. Minus a third. So we go across and upwards. So this is a solution we just worked out, so the 109.47 dot, dot, dot. And we want to find this solution over here. So this is a slightly different situation to what we've done before. Again, use the symmetry of the graph, that's really important. So we've got this yellow line and this yellow line being the same. So the first thing we need to do here is work out the length of that yellow line. So that yellow line here, if I pop it down here, is just 109.47 dot 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 minus 90. And then whatever that is, we need to take it away from 270. So let's do all that on my calculator. So we take the answer and we want to subtract it from 90. Again, trying to use all the decimals here. And then what we do is we take that away from 270. So then we do 270 minus that particular answer. And then it gives us our final answer of 250.5. So let me pop that in, 250.5, dot, 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 but then rounded it is 250.5. And we've got our solution. And you can check your working here, and you can see where you pick up any method marks if you don't get to those particular answers. Right, I think we've got two more questions to go here. So seven sine x plus two is equal to zero. Again, we approach this in the same way that we've seen before. It's quite comforting to do lots of these questions to really build up your experience. So again, we want the sine x on its own. So what's the opposite of plus two? Well, we're gonna minus two from both sides. This cancels. We're left with seven sine x equal to minus two. And then what's the opposite of times in by seven? Well, divide by seven on both sides. This cancels. We're left with sine x is equal to minus two over seven. Again, the first way we get the first solution is we just use it normally. So the opposite of sine is inverse sine on both sides. This cancels. We're left with x is equal to sine inverse of minus two over seven. Let's work out that first answer. 
So let's pop that in. So we have sine inverse of, let's pop this in as a fraction, minus, oh, not answer, I don't definitely don't want answer. Uh, minus two divided by seven it gives us. Okay, so this is slightly interesting here. We get the answer of minus 16.6. So I'm going to talk about that now. So let's pop that in first of all. So minus 16.6 dot dot dot. Notice this is not within the domain that we have here between zero and 360. So you're thinking, where do the two solutions come from? Well, we still do it in exactly the same way. We're going to draw a sketch of the sine graph just as we've done before going between one and minus one and extend it slightly over here as well into the negative direction again still going to label 90 180 270 and 360 again draw in our curve this is where to approach it in the same way yep working with sine just double checking it's up and down and down and like so, and this would also continue in the same way as well. Right, and now we're going to put in our solution. So we have here, let's do this in a different color, green. Oh, this bit's gone missing. Let me just pop that in so we have the smooth curve here. Actually, this is the important part of it as well. So we've got minus two sevenths. That's going to be down here somewhere minus two over seven. If we draw a straight line across, you'll start visualizing exactly which two solutions we're looking for here. So notice across the graph once, twice where we want it and once where we don't want it. Now this answer here was minus 16.6 dot dot dot. And if I put in my yellow line here, notice that's gonna be the same as if I Pop in green here, because notice we want to work out, because it's between zero and 360 here, this answer and this answer. So if you get my yellow, trusty yellow line out here, I need to work out this one. Remember the yellow line's the same here and the same here. And also this one here as well. So the first thing I'm gonna do is work out this one. Well, it's 180 plus whatever this yellow line is. Well, luckily I know the yellow line is actually just 16.6 dot, 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 dot. So the first answer here is gonna be 180 plus that 16.6 dot, dot, dot. Notice it's plus because we're going beyond 180. And here we're gonna do 360 minus 16.6 because we wanna go backwards from the 360 point. So once I've established how I want to work this out, let's go to the calculator and finish this off. So we've got the minus 16.6. So first thing I'm going to do here, so I'm using a little bit of calculator trickery here. I'm just going to times this by minus one. So I've got this as positive. And I'm going to use this store um, idea here. So control store. I'm going to store this as the letter A. So every time I type in A, I get that particular decimal that I want. And the first thing I'm going to do is do 180 plus A. Most calculators do this kind of idea. So we get 196.6. And then we do 360 minus that important decimal, so minus A, and we get 343.4. So I'm going to pop this across these two answers, 196.6 and 343.4. So 196.6 and 343.4. So that question is a little trickier because you're not given initially from the calculator an answer in zero to 360, but then you use that line that we've done before to work out the two answers. Okay, so you can check your working there. And let's go on to our next question. So tan x is equal to root three, and then we find all the possible values. Again, gives an indication there's more than one of x. Now this can be done actually slightly differently. This is what's called an exact value. So if I have tan x, is equal to root three, then one thing that's quite useful to do here is know your exact value. So one's off by heart, so to speak. So if I do the same process as before, uh, get my trusty pen, the opposite of this is tan inverse on both sides, like so, this cancels, I'm left with x equals tan inverse of root three. 
Um, I know this off by heart as 60 degrees. Now, again, you can use your calculator actually to check this as well, but I just know this off by heart. And it's something I'd recommend to do. If you want a video going through exactly that, then do check out the video above you. That goes through how I just knew that off by heart and might save you that extra two minutes in the exam that you might need to get that A star or get that A. So once I know this is 60, then again, I can draw my tan graph. Again, if this feels a little bit repetitive at this point, this is good, yeah? It's really getting this embedded in exactly what you need to know in order to do really well on these questions. So I've got this graph. Remember, the tan graph is the kind of weird one, so to speak. So it goes off to infinity, comes back from negative infinity, 180, off to infinity again, and back like so. And we've got 60 here because it was root three. So let me mark this on a different color, green. So you've got this answer here, 60. This is root three. And then notice we also cross the graph here as well. Dot, 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 dot. Again, I can use this yellow line trick as I like to call it. So this here has to be the same as this here. So if this is 60, then this has to be 180 plus 60. So my second answer that I want to read off here, this one here, is equal to 240. So 180 plus that yellow line, which is equal to 60. So my two answers here are just 60 and 240. This one you could actually do without a calculator. So there are the two solutions that you can see in front of you. And I think this is our last question for today. Yep, yeah, solve the equation, tan x is equal to two. Again, we start this in almost identical way to what we did before. So we've got tan x is equal to two. The opposite of tanning, apart from going to Iceland, of course, is <laughs> inverse tan. If you like that joke, by the way, please do say something in the comments. So we cancel those, we get x equals tan inverse of two. And unfortunately, this is one I can't do in my head, so I'm gonna to go to my calculator. So let's do tan inverse this time of two. That gives me 63.43. Dot, dot. So my first answer will be 63.4. Um, the lazy trick here, so I'm going to write this down as lazy trick. You can do the same thing I did with the graphs here, but an alternative, and this just works for tan, is you can just add on 180 degrees. Okay, so you can use the graph like I've just shown you, but if you get tan specifically, to get the next solution, you just add on 180. So if I add on 180 here, I'm just going to get... 243.4 so it can also be 180 plus 63.43 dot 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 which is equal to 243.4 so nice lazy trick you can use for tan doesn't work for sine and cos you need to be a little bit more careful on that all right, hopefully you enjoyed that video. If you want to go and have a whole walkthrough about circle theorems, then do check out the video right in front of you. Or if you're a bit stuck about functions, then do check out the video also in front of you as well.